Humber Limited was a British manufacturer of bicycles, motorcycles and motor vehicles incorporated and listed on the Stock Exchange in 1887. It took the name Humber & Co Limited because of the high reputation of the products of one of the constituent businesses that had belonged to Thomas Humber. A financial reconstruction in 1899 transferred its business to Humber Limited. From an interest in motor vehicles beginning in 1896, the motor division became much more important than the cycle division and the cycle trademarks were sold to Raleigh in 1932. The motorcycles were withdrawn from sale during the depression of the 1930s. Humber is now a dormant mark for automobiles as well as cycles. Following their involvement in Humber through Hillman in 1928 the Roots brothers acquired 60% of Humber's ordinary capital, sufficient for a controlling interest. The two Roots brothers joined the Humber board in 1932 and began to make Humber the holding company for vehicle manufacturing members of what became their Roots group. By 1960 annual production was around 200,000 vehicles. Previous insistence on Roots family control, however, may have led to under-capitalization of the business. Building a brand new car, the Hillman Imp, proved beyond Humber and Roots Group resources and their businesses were bought by the Chrysler Corporation in 1967. Topic ownership and control Private investors from incorporation and first listing in 1887 Amalgamation with Hillman 1928, Hillman newly controlled by Roots Brothers Roots Securities acquires 60% of Humber, Hillman is made a Humber subsidiary 1932 Chrysler Corporation acquires control of Roots Motors colloquially Roots Group, 1967 wholly owned operating subsidiaries Commercial Cars 1925 Hillman merger 1929 subsidiary 1930 Thrupp and Maberly 1926 X Roots Securities 1932 Clement Talbot 1935 renamed Sunbeam Talbot Sunbeam Motor Car Company 1935 Trolleybuses only Carrier Motors 1934 British Light Steel Pressings 1937 Tilling Stevens 1950 partly owned until February 1964 Four, Singer Motors 1956 partly owned until February 1964 Topic History Topic 1887 to 1918 Cycle Industry The cycle industry was consolidating in the late 1880s and partners Thomas Humber and fledgling company promoter T Harrison Lambert sold their Humber Cycles business to investors who added a number of other substantial cycle manufacturers and then floated the new combine on the stock exchange such was the public's recognition of Humber products and their high quality and reliability the whole new organization was named Humber & Co Limited though Humber's was not the largest component. Thomas Humber agreed to manage the whole enterprise with its works in Coventry and Wolverhampton as well as Beeston. He retired in 1892 at the end of his five year contract. Humber expanded into Europe and in 1896 their subsidiary, Humber, France, joined with La Societe des Velocipedes Clement and La Societe des Cycles Gladiator, obtaining stock exchange listings in order to form one of the largest cycle monopolies in Europe and with the intention of improving the position of Humber, France. The directors expressed the greatest interest in the new industry of motor carriages and cycles for which extensive works were to be erected by the monopoly at lavalois Perret. At the time of the flotation prospective investors were told that agencies were already established in all principal towns in France, and the cities, St. Petersburg, Copenhagen, Milan, Athens, Brussels, Bucharest, Amsterdam, Lisbon, Buenos Aires, Santiago, Constantinople, Algiers, SFAX, Tunis, Alexandria, Saigon, Hong Kong, Port Said and throughout the whole of South America. The chairman of the new monopoly was chairman of Dunlop Pneumatic Tire Co. and another director was the manager of Dunlop France. 
Negotiations between the parties were completed by Ernest Terra Hooley. The ambitious new monopoly was not successful. Disputes between the partners dragged through the English courts until the turn of the century. A severe economic recession in 1899 then brought about a financial reconstruction and the incorporation of a new company, Humber Limited, to continue the existing business. First series production Carson 1896 Humber built a prototype and nine production motorcars in their new Coventry premises. In November 1896 a car was exhibited at the Stanley Cycle Show in London. They are claimed to be the first series production cars made in England. At Humber and Company's next general meeting in 1897, the managing director said they had received many letters asking if they would produce a motorised vehicle, and that they had in fact been working on this project for two years, but had delayed production until they found a suitably reliable engine. Having now found an engine they were gearing up for production, the first Humber car was produced in 1898 was a three-wheeled tricar. Their first conventional four-wheeled car appeared in 1901. Cars went into production in Beeston near Nottingham as well as Stoke, Coventry but to separate designs. Just as with bicycles Beeston Humber products retained their high-quality image. The Beeston Works closed in 1908 on the opening of the new works at Stoke. Humber's profit went from £16,500 in 1905 to £106,500 the next year and £154,400 in 1907. On 12 March 1908, the new works was officially opened at Stoke, then just outside the city of Coventry. New buildings covered 13.5 acres and allowed for the employment of 5,000 hands. The new works was designed to be capable of producing 150 cars and 1,500 cycles per week. Another financial reconstruction was made in 1909. In 1911 they took over the Centaur Cycle Company. By this time a wide range of cars was produced from the 600cc Humberet to several six-cylinder six-liter models. In 1913 Humber was second only to Wolseley as the largest manufacturer of cars in the United Kingdom. Revived by the war Humber produced motorcycles and bicycles for the war office as well as cars. Topic. 1919–1939 There were post-war slumps in the early 1920s and in addition the public were moving from pedal cycles to motorcycles as well as to cars. Rover, Singer, Swift, Triumph and Riley all gave up their manufacture of cycles. Humber acquisitions In 1925 Humber moved into the production of commercial vehicles with the purchase of Cummer. In the year to 1928 Humber's chairman was obliged to report a loss for the second year running. Cummer cars turnover was substantially increased but Cummer did not return to profit. The bicycle business improved but motorcycles did not. Humber cars, the product being as the chairman put it of a distinctive class, were more influenced by conditions than were mass-produced vehicles. Humber he described as one of the oldest and best-known higher-grade cars. Before Roots The chairman, Stanley Brotherhood, told a special meeting of shareholders of the exceedingly good performance of one of the 14-40 cars driven by J. W. Fitzwilliam and his brother who had just returned from traversing 4,500 miles in Central Europe including the worst roads in the Balkans. He then reported the "...drastic redesign." of Humber's cars which together with improved appearance and performance and revised prices were expected to improve the product's performance in the marketplace. Mention of the drastic redesign at that special meeting was followed by another meeting to discuss the amalgamation of Humber and its partly owned subsidiary Hillman Motor Car Company. 
Hillman, the chairman explained, made one of the most popular medium-priced cars and would provide a suitable partner to the distinctive Humber products. Shareholders were unanimous that the amalgamation should go ahead on the proposed terms. In 1929, Hillman, under the control of the Roots brothers, was amalgamated with Humber. The combine was not under the control of the Roots brothers, but William Roots' marketing skills had been immediately brought into play when Roots Limited had been appointed world exporters. In December 1929 reviewing the 1929 year the chairman told shareholders Humber had now introduced three new models named, 16-50, for the 1928 Motor Show, Snipe and a seven-seater Pullman both for the October 1929 Motor Show. For the time being the 9-28 and 20-65 horsepower models would continue but at a reduced price. After Roots Later Michael Sedgwick would describe the events of this era as, "...a leveling process comparable to the fate of Wolseley's 1920s cars. Out, he said, went uncertain braking, the IOE, engine and superbly finished coachwork, the new cars were pure roots with Bendix brakes, downdraft carburetors, silent third, gearboxes with central gear lever and hydraulic shock absorbers. The 16 horsepower car could cope with the Humber Snipe bodywork only with a low final drive ratio. The other cars also became slightly bigger Hillmans with different engines and a longer wheelbase. A Humber 12 was introduced that looked like a Hillman Minx with a painted spare wheel cover and hinged quarter lights. There was attractive work by independent coachbuilders on the 12 chassis. The Vogue Sports Saloon may or may not have been designed by Couturier Captain Molyneux. The 12's engine was bored out to 75 mm and powered Hillman's 14 and even Sunbeam Talbot's post-war 90. By the outbreak of war in 1939 the quite fast big-engine Super Snipe with hydraulic brakes was selling well and one model became the Army's famous Second World War staff car. Topic: 1939 to 1945. The Wrighton on Dunsmore plant, which closed at the end of 2006, had originated in 1939 as one of the so-called shadow factories. The Wrighton plant was originally built to produce aero engines. At Speak, Liverpool, another shadow factory opened in April 1939, assembled bombers. Armoured cars, scout cars and staff cars were made in the existing factories along with much other war material. General Montgomery, commander of the British and Allied forces in Northern Africa during the Desert War of World War II, had two specially built Humber Super Snipe four-door open tours made with larger front wings or guards, mine-proof floors, special fittings and long-range fuel tanks. Two cars were built for him and used in the Africa campaign against General Rommel, who used open tourer large, long-range Mercedes Benzes. Montgomery's Humbers were known as Old Faithful and the Victory Car. Both cars still exist in museums in England and are a testament to the high engineering and manufacturing standards of Humber and Roots Limited. The Victory Car drove Montgomery and Churchill through the streets of London during the Vey Parades at the end of World War II. Topic: 1945 to 9,000 vehicles. 1933-34, 20,000. 1937 to 39 41000 1946 47 42000 1949 50 90000 topic 1945 to 1967 In the post-war era, Humber's mainstay products included the four-cylinder Hawk and six-cylinder Super Snipe. 
Being a choice of businessmen and officialdom alike, Humbers gained a reputation for well-appointed interiors and solid quality. The Hawk and the Super Snipe went through various designs, though all had a «transatlantic» influence. Annual output, 200,000 vehicles in 1960 routes was the world's 12th largest motor corporation by volume, its annual output nearly 200,000 cars, vans and trucks. They employed some 20,000 people. The group had 6 million square feet square meters of manufacturing space and owned nine assembly plants outside Britain. They were involved in car hire, hire purchase and driving schools and even made air conditioners. There were about 1,000 dealers in the UK. The two Roots brothers remained in control of their group from their adjoining suites of offices in Devonshire House, Piccadilly. The ground floor Roots showroom on Piccadilly is now an Audi showroom. IMP and Chrysler's success of BMC's Mini made Roots speed the development of their own small car. A new assembly plant was planned but government was obliging major employers to build new plants where there was surplus labor. Jaguar solved their expansion problem by buying Daimler and its Coventry plant with experienced workforce but Roots selected a greenfield site by Pressed Steel Body Works near Glasgow Airport in Scotland, at Linwood near Paisley. The new factory was officially opened in May 1963 and the new rear-engine Hillman Imp went on sale the next day but there were difficulties with industrial relations and, soon, the Imp's reliability. The IMP's heavy development expenses and slackening sales to USA brought about losses for the Roots Group in both 1962 and 1963. In February 1964, the owners of the minority holdings in Humber Limited and Tilling Stevens and Singer Motors sold their holdings to Roots Motors Limited, taking in exchange shares in Roots Motors. Humber and its two subsidiaries now became wholly owned subsidiaries of Roots Motors Limited. The last major activity of, by then, Lord Roots, was to open sale negotiations with Chrysler Corporation. He died in December 1964. Chrysler took control in 1967. 1967–1976 The last of the traditional large Humbers, the Series VA Super Snipe fitted with twin Stromberg CD100 carburetors were sold in 1968, when Chrysler ended production. Several V8 models had been in pre-production at this time, but were never publicly sold. Several of these test examples survive today. Humber's and Roots' last new car was the second generation of Humber Scepter, a variant of their Roots Aero model. The mark was shelved in 1976 when all Hillmans became badged Chryslers. The Hillman Hunter another Aero model badged Chrysler until production ceased in 1979 when Chrysler's European division was sold to Peugeot and the mark renamed Talbot. The Talbot mark was abandoned at the end of 1986 on passenger cars, although it was continued on vans for six years afterwards. <laughs> Main models <laughs> Surviving cars There is a thriving club, and many of these upmarket cars survive today from before the 1930s. The world's largest collection of the Roots Brothers Humber cars built after 1930 can be viewed at the Marshalls Post Vintage Humber Car Museum in Hull. It includes 21 Humber cars dating from 1932 to 1970 on permanent display, plus 24 unrestored cars. Topic. Aviation Humber produced a number of aircraft and aero engines in the years before the First World War. 
In 1909 the company signed a contract to build 40 copies of the Blériot 11 monoplane, powered by their own three-cylinder engine, and four aircraft were exhibited at the Aero Show at Olympia in 1910. During the First World War Humber built the BR-1 and BR-2 engines designed for Humber by W. O. Bentley and more engines were built in different factories in Coventry for the Air Ministry during the Second World War. See also Humber cycles Humber motorcycles List of car manufacturers of the United Kingdom Notes